Well, hello and welcome to my review of the Mora 740MG. Now, the 740 is the quintessential Mora knife. If you got to describe a Mora knife to somebody, you're probably going to say an inexpensive, plastic-handled, partial-tang, thin-bladed, scanty-ground, general-purpose knife that comes with a cheap plastic sheath with a drain hole. And by the way, it's awesome. Now, that's the 740 in military green. Sadly, it's not in the lineup anymore, but it represents what Amora is and what it can do. The 740's old school, and it's one of the fathers of the new age of Mora of Sweden. Now, I'm not quite sure why the 740 doesn't appeal to me more than it does. It's got all the required stuff that should make it a top pick for me, but there's something about the plainness of it that just can't get my boat to float. It's a very solid offering, and it's going to serve the user well, no doubt. So don't let my cold shoulder fool you. It's a powerhouse cutter, and it really does command a spot right up there with the best of them. It's just not my favorite pick. That's all. I don't know. You don't know. No, I don't. <laughs> my son's helping me with this one. I guess he don't know either, huh? No. The 740 is just a few ounces. And has a 4-inch blade. So it has a four inch blade and it's about eight and a half inches overall. Now it's made entirely of what feels like an ABS plastic and it doesn't have any other material save the quality 1095 carbon blade. Now the blade's a partial tab tang that runs about a third of the way into the handle and it offers enough toughness for a knife of this size. It won't bust on you too quick. Well the fit and finish is good for a, a knife in this price range. And the handle's ergonomic, and it makes for easy handling characteristics. Uh, and you can see it there. The snow's flying if you, uh, if you take a close look. Well, the blade's clearly stamped with Frost logo, uh, with no press marks in the grain of the steel on the edges of the stamp. And there it is with a Colt match target rifle. It's a good rifle in its own right. And coming up here is a, a nice picture of the lanyard hole, which is a must for some bushcrafters. And finally coming up, here it is flanking a high point 9mm. Hey, don't knock it till you tried it. The high point is ugly, but it fills a valid role, uh, just like some men I know. Well, the sheath's the regular Bag Army Men grade plastic. It's green, military green, just like the knife. It's clearly, clearly logoed Mora Sweden there. And it's got a belt loop on it. That's a little better than the buttonholes uh, some of the other older ones had. And there's a repeat of the picture uh, with the knife inserted into the sheath. Application is general cutting with a focus on woodsman applications as well as hunting due to the green coloration. The finger guard serves the hunter well as it would prevent your fingers from sliding up the blade when removing organs from the chest cavity of larger game. Now this is always a blind task for me because I usually reach up into the chest cavity past the previously removed intestines and stomach materials. It's nice to have a good finger guard for blind cutting in that situation. Well the 740 MG is a solid Mora offering from years past. If you can find one, go for it. You won't be disappointed by the quality of the cuts, but be advised there really isn't anything that sets it apart from the new lineup. And since it's been discontinued, you may have to pay more for it. The price was around 10 or 15 bucks during its production run, and I wouldn't pay more than that, seeing as how you can get current offerings that are just as good with a few more standout qualities. I tacked some video on the back here, so enjoy it, and I'll try and keep them coming. Well, this is the Mora 740 MG. <clears throat> it's a very vanilla Mora knife. This one was made uh, when Frost's, the blade is stamped Frost's. I don't know if it was made before KJ Erickson and Frost got together and made Mora of Sweden, or if uh, they were just using the blade stock. Uh, it's irrelevant, but this one's stamped with uh, Frost's. Uh, old old stamp. Anyway, this uh, my postal scales on the frets. It doesn't weigh more than a couple ounces. It's got a lanyard hole, which is very nice. The sheath uh, can accept the blade going in le to the left, to the right, so you can put it on either left or right side and have the blade uh, face whatever direction you like. Uh, the sheath is eh, not as secure as maybe some of the other sheaths. It's got your typical drain hole down here. Uh, one of the things I do like about the knife is the finger guard. It's not really, uh, doesn't obstruct the different kinds of cuts that uh, you'd like to make 
with these kind of knives and bushcraft applications, but it's enough where uh, you're not, your finger isn't going to slide up on the uh, on the sharp Scandinavian grind. It doesn't look as wacky as the new uh, the 511s as well. So, yeah, there you go. I mean, we'll talk more about it in the slideshow, but it's just a, a very run-of-the-mill. You know, everyone that's into Mora's has one, uh, has or has seen them anyway. Uh, one more thing before I go, I'm not really uh, wild about the uh, the hard. It's almost like an ABS plastic. It doesn't really provide a good purchase, especially when this thing gets wet. You can see there's snow up there in the corner, and uh, I mean, I can easy picture my hands slipping around on this thing versus the the newer Bushcraft series and the 900 handles that really have a tacky a tacky feel to them. So yeah, I'm not really wild about the handle material, but the actual shape uh, and the design of, of the knife uh, is is pretty good stuff. Typical Morris stuff.